there was a rabbi, a gid. He was 18 years old. He was a genius. He was very smart. In the Talmudic scholarly world, he's one of the most famous personalities the last 150 years. His name was Yosef, jo Joseph, and his family name was Rosen. He's known in the in the scholarly world of smart Jews as the genius of Rogachev. Rogachev or Rohachev, depending on how you pronounce it in Russian. He was a brilliant man, had a great, great mind. And he absorbed the whole town, the whole Talmud, the entire Talmud like a sponge. And he was the Rebbe's teacher. The Rebbe used to quote him, our Rebbe, would quote him all the time. He was a great, he was one of the most original thinkers in Talmud in the last three centuries, probably. When he was 18 years old, he knew the whole Torah. He knew everything that was published. And he decided to check out if anybody else knows anything. You know, imagine you're a genius, right? I had... <laughs> You have a classmate that's a genius. I had a classmate that was a genius. Huh? We all hated him. Why? Because he made sure we never forgot that he was a genius. Right? He was obnoxious. He was a nitnik. So the poor guy was, he was just trying to, he just wanted to start what you knew. I had a classmate. I'm talking about I was 11 years old, 12 years old. He used to read the encyclopedia like this, like this column, like this, and turn the page. And, and we all thought he was making jokes and we would test him. He knew every word. He was, I was a genius. Now he's a big Chabad rabbi. But then he was a genius. And we beat up on the poor guy because he was obnoxious. So this Yosef Rosen was obnoxious. He went from town to town. He went into the rabbi in each shtetl, to the rabbi, to the biggest Talmudist. And he would start talking to him, and within 15 minutes, he was ma mopping the floor with the guy. Rabbis in there with white beards, three times his age, four times, hey, they knew nothing. He knew more than all of them. He was really very bright. And this is what he did, he went from place to place. And every once in a while, he met a rabbi who was also bright. You know, he wasn't the only genius. You know, Jews have been blessed with more than one genius. They're all obnoxious, but there's more than one. Um, I don't mean that, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> It's, it's not fair, so we make it even by making fun of it. Um, we could have a conversation about that. But anyway, he would meet a rabbi who really was bright. And when you meet a rabbi who was as smart as he was, they would fight like lions, like two bull elephants. They'd smash into each other. The whole... Uh, people describe the Rebbe, our Rebbe, talking to other geniuses. They'd stand in the hallway of 770. They wouldn't quote... They'd quote page numbers. If you, it's like two computers talking to each other. You stood and observed what they were doing. You had no idea what was going on. Because they didn't quote passages. They didn't say that. They just quoted a page. You know, Tamura 16b. No. Bechardais 11a. And Brachas 47b. And the Toysus. And they, this is like, it's, it's a different language. So this genius, this 18-year-old genius, Ragachov, came t to a town. And he met a rabbi. He came to the city of Lublin. Lublin always had great rabbis. And um, he met a rabbi who was three times his age, he was an old man. And they started to fight, to, to have this, this Talmudic uh, fisticuffs. And they were arguing for hours. He was a match for him. And they argued and they debated and they threw pages of Gemara at each other. Anyway, when he walked out of this rabbi's house, he was dizzy, he was, he was dazed, he was overwhelmed. And they heard him as he walked through the streets of Lublin. He was muttering to himself. He spoke in Yiddish. He says, "Dead Alta can learn. It. That old man can learn. That old man is smart." So before he left this rabbi's house, this old rabbi's house, he said to this old rabbi, "Is there anybody else in Lublin worth my time? You met me. You see, I'm a pretty smart guy. I'm also an arrogant guy. Is there anybody else in Lublin I should bother go speaking to?" He says, "Yeah." Lublin had a, a rov, had a rabbi, and Lublin had a rebbe, had a, had a Hasidic rebbe. The rabbi was a great genius, and the rebbe was a holy man who gave out cake, you understand, and herring. But this rebbe who gave out cake and herring also was a great master, was a great genius, knew much, much Torah. He says, you want to speak to somebody else in Lublin that can, that can match you page for page and book for book and bookcase for bookcase, go into the rebbe of Lublin. His name was Tzadik HaKoyen. The Rav of Lublin was Shnei Zalman Fratkin, the Torah's Chassid. The names don't mean that much to you. They, they frankly, don't mean that much to me either. It's a long time ago. This and is the seventh. But the, the Rebbe of Lublin, he's, today he's very popular in the Hasidic world. Reb Tzadik HaKoyin of Lublin. Go into him, you can talk to him. He's a genius. He's a great, he's a Rebbe, he's a big Tzadik. But he's also a great Talmudist. So this 18-year-old genius goes across town. He goes into the Lublin Rebbe. He comes into his room. 
And the Lubina Rebbe is sitting with his hands folded, looking at him like as if he's a monkey. And the genius of Ragachev throws a page at him. He starts to quote Talmudic passages. He's goading him. He wants to create the framework for a good fight. They're going to have a, two supercomputers are going to clash, which is his delight. That was his pleasure. And Reb Sadek is looking at him, and he quotes one page, he quotes a second page, he quotes a third page, and he's looking at him, he's not, he's, I'm not playing, I'm not playing, you know, the, the rabbi of Oblin fought with you, I'm, I'm not in for this game. So he sits with his hands folded, and this 18-year-old genius is throwing pages at him, he quotes one passage, a second passage, he's trying to get him agitated, he wants to get him to move into a space where he'll want to engage, and then they can have fun, they can argue. And the Rebbe, the Holy Rebbe, Tzadik HaKoyin is sitting and looking at him. And he's quoting page after page after page. But eventually he realizes that there, there's no, there's no, he has, doesn't have, nobody, he's not playing. The, the, the Lublina Rebbe, as opposed to the Lublina Rav, the Lublina Rebbe, as opposed to the Lublina Rabbi, is not playing the game. Okay, so he stops. Stops. So when he finishes trying to goad him into an argument, the Lublina Rebbe says, I think in these words you can encapsulate the whole Hasidus. I'm going to say it in Yiddish, you'll forgive me for the Yiddish, I'll translate it into English. He says to me, Junger Mann, Ich bin a Mol gewen, Ich bin euch a Mol gewen, as I wie du. Gefahr neben der Welt gewesen, as keine kennen lernen. Aber es nicht kein Leben. Gegen gefind sich a Leben. Zole de Rois learnen wie mit Avdin in the Mebish. You understand Yiddish? You gotta learn Yiddish for this. He says, Young man, I was once just like you. I ran around and showed everybody that they're all stupid. I'm smarter than everybody. I'm the smartest guy in the world. And I was the smartest guy in the world. But that's not life. That's not life. Find yourself a Rebbe who will teach you how to connect to God. That's what he said. Find yourself a Rebbe, you say you're a smart guy, big deal, a lot of smart people. But smart is a gift from God. What makes us a mensch? I'm smarter than the next guy. What makes me a mensch is I have a relationship with God. Find yourself a Rebbe, let him teach you how to serve God. That's the story, it's the whole story. It's the whole story.